All right, uh, today is uh, Tuesday, October the 15th. My name is David Favor, and I'm walking through uh, a buddy of mine's uh, site. Uh, Jonathan Green asked me to take a look at this um, uh, revamp of a site he's working on, which is uh, girlfriendinaweek.com. <clears throat> so, uh, in taking a look at uh, page speed, what I typically uses my first tool is webpagetest.org and <clears throat> whenever you pay for web work here's what I suggest is that you um, you have as your criteria for payment um, uh, four things the first thing is um, uh, HTML that is uh, clean so clean HTML means uh, zero errors and zero warnings. And the second thing is clean CSS. Clean CSS is uh, much harder because, especially if you're using WordPress themes, I've yet to find a theme that correctly implements uh, CSS. Usually you'll find hundreds of errors and warnings, and there's no reason for that. It's just sloppy coding. Uh, or a coder that uh, really just has um, a good bit to learn about coding. So I'd say maybe number two, clean CSS is uh, optional. Uh, for me anyway, since I do all my own coding, it's uh, it's mandatory. I, I always uh, put up sites with clean CSS. In fact, I will um, I'll likely um, reskin the uh, 2014 theme which is in development right now in WordPress and maybe the 2013 theme also and just go through and fix the CSS and that's a future project. Uh, the third uh, absolute mandatory is uh, you run your site through webpagetest.org and all of these scorecards come back as A's period. <clears throat> if there is a B or a D or F then the um, <clears throat> uh, person doesn't get paid. If there's a single error or warning in their HTML, they don't get paid. Now, there is one exception to the HTML warnings: is if you're doing if you're using HTML5, which I strongly suggest, <clears throat> then uh, you'll get one warning out of the W3 validator that says um, uh, they're using the experimental HTML5 conformance checker. And eventually, that one warning will go away. Also, so so also, uh, if you are checking your HTML syntax, that's using the uh, validator at w3c.org um, and also uh, our w3c uh, dot yeah, w3. Let's see, what's the? I better say the right link here. The validator link is uh, validator at w3.org. And the CSS validator is Jigsaw W3Org CSS validator you can see right here. Uh, so those are the two validators you run through. And um, <clears throat> webpagetest.org you can see that this site is got some serious brokenness. Um, and actually, so number three is uh, webpagetest dot org uh, all A's <clears throat> fourth item is webpagetest.org uh, and X in the CDN blank here you notice that there's a check mark here that says effective use of CDN boy is that a freaking um, uh, leading you astray because this particular site here is suffering uh, excruciatingly uh, slow page speed load times because of uh, the way the CDN is configured. So rule of thumb is uh, anybody that tells you you need to use a CDN, they really don't understand how web technology works. CDNs are band-aids which will only fix a site that's uh, excruciatingly slow and misconfigured to begin with. Uh, better to um, use the CDN test to uh, determine the quality of your coders. If uh, somebody tells you that you ought to use a CDN, they're uh, incompetent or they just um, have a lot to learn and you just ought to fire them and move on to somebody else. <clears throat> Every site I've ever worked on, the if they're using a CDN, the first thing I always do is get rid of any type of CDN inter interaction 
and that's uh, one of the the best ways to speed a site up. Um, and and the reason for that is that most CDNs uh, incorrectly um, uh, set up the um, the caching headers for objects, and also even worse, if you're caching video on a CDN. If you think about your bandwidth charges um, and the speed of videos, uh, if you're serving a video and it streams, that means a person can pause and restart the video and it actually pauses and restarts the flow of data. Also, it means they can grab the, grab the scrub bar and move it and drop it and it will change the place the video is playing. If you're using a CDN, uh, none of that happens. Now most people use um, uh, Amazon uh, S3 services for their videos and if you think about it that's good for Amazon because once a browser connects to a video on S3 Amazon starts pumping that video down the wire uh, with no consideration of uh, whether the person is actually playing the video or has stopped the video or is moving the scrub bar and so you'll always be charged the maximum bandwidth usage for uh, serving videos off of uh, uh, S3. I recommend uh, if you're using paid video you just um, set it up as an unlisted link on YouTube and just route people to that unlisted link and then every month or so take down all the videos off unlisted links and republish them under different unlisted links and then um, make those uh, the current crop of unlisted links available only through some sort of paywall on your side. But anyway, that's another um, another item. So checklist number five here is uh, this um, this time right here. You'll see this is 4.92 seconds. That should be under uh, one second for the first view and usually um, only um, well under a hundred milliseconds for any uh, subsequent page view. Uh, and in this particular case, this page, um, <clears throat> what happened when I went and uh, looked at the load time on it is webpagetest.org actually timed out because this um, this site couldn't be accessed in uh, a minute. In other words, after a, a minute, uh, webpagetest.org was still trying to pull down content and could it, couldn't get it down, so it gave up. Now most likely that is because of these red lines. So um, so number five was uh, load uh, load time for first and repeat views. And number six um, uh, payment contingency is no red lines on webpagetest.org. And the red lines, see these red lines here? Those red lines mean that that particular object is completely missing off the website. So if I click on this, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a um, style.css file that's missing. There's uh, a couple of images that are missing. And that looks like it's the only thing. So. Um, well, one thing that really has to happen right away is uh, the f actually probably um, let's see if we make a, a list of items here the uh, I guess the the number one fix is remove well we'll say uh, fix uh, uh, broken links uh, broken file links and by fix, I mean either um, uh, remove the reference. In other words, someplace there's a reference in a in a web page, probably on the 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 uh, this index dot index four html. There's a reference to the style dot css. That reference needs to be removed from index four dot html, or more likely, this style dot css has changed names or it's located a different place so then in that case the reference will be fixed or if the file is missing and should be uh, there then uh, add the file so the ways to fix this are either to remove the reference uh, fix the reference you know if the file is a different place than what it's being referenced or uh, add the file now if you're 
if you're working on a very complex CMS site like a WordPress site and it's um, it's a little bit difficult for you to figure out where the heck this style.css file is being referenced from. For me it's not because it's a single uh, search command on um, at the command line but if you're actually using WordPress only from the back end admin panel it's excruciating to find uh, references to files sometimes. So the, the other way to fix this is just to um, create a zero length file called style.css and uh, add it to your site. So uh, create a zero length file. I'm making myself some um, notes here. Now that's just a band-aid. I'd recommend you, you remove the file, but that's um, that's one way you can do it. Uh, same way with these this ping and this JPEG image here. Um, you notice what happens is that once these two images get hit, everything else begins to slow down. In other words, here's the problem. So most web browsers are set up to where they download four objects at a time. So let's see what's going to happen here with this website. So the first object starts downloading, the second object starts downloading and stops. In other words, this red line goes all the way across here forever. And that means that there now is only uh, three threads that are available to download things because this first thread, you've got four threads, the first thread is stuck. So now these, these three threads start downloading all these objects in parallel until these two objects get hit. And now you're down to one thread. So that means that there's only one object here that's getting, well actually it looks like you, this particular um, webpagetest.org is, is running, uh, maybe they're running more than five threads because it, it looks like some of these are being downloaded in parallel. It looks like this might be running six or seven threads. But most browsers like Chrome and Firefox, uh, Safari, Internet Exploder are all set up for um, five threads. The only one that's set up for eight threads I think right now is uh, Oprah, uh, Oprah, uh, Opera. So um, the, the biggest um, win for this site is to fix these broken links. That's number one. Uh, number two is to immediately fire whoever is doing the web work on the site because they're incompetent. And I say that because there are several things that are broken here that should never, ever, ever be broken. Uh, compressed transfer means that um, the uh, gzip flag, um, gzip is the compression algorithm that uh, Apache and uh, what's the Microsoft abortion of a web server, um, uh, it, oh, it, it escapes me right now. But anyway, the Microsoft server is the same way. Um, is you turn on gzipping and um, what happens is the uh, the data is compressed on the line which really speeds things up dramatically so that's a that's a um, a bit that's or a single flag that's switched in the uh, uh, global configuration of Apache so that every website serving off this particular server this particular web server should always have compression enabled and if that's not enabled, that means that whoever set this site up ought to be taken out and uh, publicly uh, pilloried. The pillory, you know, is the stocks where you throw rotten tomatoes at their heads. Uh, compress images. This uh, is also a big uh, killer. Um, yeah, let's take a look at this. So here's an image that's 81.6 kilobytes. Compressed, it could be 47.5, so you could save 34.2 kilobytes. So all these, um, so actually that's another, um, uh, that's number seven on um, you pay your people if uh, all images are compressed correctly. Um, so that'll actually also get caught in item number three, which is webpagetest.org gives all A's or they don't get paid. Um, the way that I compress my images, I use a very aggressive image compressor that I wrote, and all it does is it makes calls to all sorts of public domain utilities, um, some of them running thousands of different compression algorithms. 
uh, and picks the smallest file. Uh, and so that was a script I wrote once and then I never have to think about it again. In fact, if you ask me how to compress an image, I ain't got a clue. I'd have to go look at my script because that's research I did when I wrote the script. And I, it's, then I get to forget it. Um, progressive JPEG's good. That, that's, a, that's a, a must these days. Now, cache static content. So here's the problem. If you notice... Um, all these, every single image on this site failed saying no max age or expires tag. So what that means is that this CloudFront CDN, which is obviously an abortion because this, there's no way that um, a user using CloudFront can set this information. This information has to be set by CloudFront itself, by the company CloudFront. So you, so if you use CloudFront, you ain't got any control over this at all. It's just, that's just the way it is. The, so this means max age and max expires is not set. So what that means is every time a person visits this website, uh, every single one of these, um, let's see if there, if this only applies to Images, no, this applies to everything. See SWF, CSS. So if you notice the CSS here, girlfriend uh, style sheet screen dot CSS, this means that no max age or expires is set. So that means the CDN is broken and also this website is broken. So again, this is reason to fire whoever you've got working doing your web work because this is something that should be set up at a global level on Apache and apply to every domain being served off of this uh, web server. So um, the problem with all this is that the max age or expires tag on an image basically says how long that image is um, going to be um, immutable. In other words, it's not going to change. So what I do with my images and um, jQuery files and CSS files is I version them. In other words, uh, I will call um, you know jQuery.js. I'll call it jQuery-1.8.1.js because I know that version 1.8.1 of, of jQuery is never going to change. It's immutable. So I create that file and I set the expires tag as 10 years on that file. So that means the first time the site gets visit, visited, that file gets downloaded into the person's browser, cache, and then that file is cached forever. In other words, every time a person comes back to that site, then the, the uh, visitor visiting the site gets the uh, file out of their uh, browser cache instead of out of um, the um, uh, off the website itself. In this case, what's going to happen, and one of the reasons this is so slow, the site is so slow, if you take a look here, um, if you notice the, the first view load time and the repeat load view time are both almost identical. So what that means is there's no caching period. So the CDN and the website is actually slowing itself down um, by not using these uh, the normal expires tags or expired um, cache headers. So what you should see here is uh, let's take a look at um, you know this ought to this ought to run pretty quick here. So what you'll likely see is you'll likely see that there is a, um, you know, the the first visit is going to be, um, now I've got some sort of something i got to fix here too. So you notice the first visit, first off, the first visit is less than one second, which is correct. The repeat visit is 128 milliseconds. 
So if you look at the waterfall view here, you can see here's the load time for everything in parallel. Da, 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 no red lines, that's good. Now look at the repeat view though. <clears throat> the, re the repeat view, the only thing that's getting hit is this Google Analytics GIF, and I don't know why that is, but I'm going to fix that. So all the content, in other words, I cache my HTML for, I think, um, five minutes or something like that. So if a person happens to hit reload on their browser or come back, you know, if they're going between pages, like they go from a home page to um, a category page to a child page, and then they click home again, that home page comes out of their br uh, browser cache instead of coming off my site again. So all this is... Uh, standard um, configuration in Apache. In fact, if you use a, um, a distro like uh, Ubuntu for running your Apache servers off, this is all set up, usually set up correctly right out of the box. So um, the, the primary fixes for this website are number one, fix the broken links. Um, number Two, set on the gzip flag in the uh, configuration for the global configuration. So compression. And number three, uh, remove any reference to a CDN. So dump CDN. And number four is uh, fix uh, expires tags correctly on uh, the web server. Uh, number five is compressed images. And um, oh shoot, I guess if uh, if you pay me to do a website analysis on your site, I'll give you my. Uh, uh, uber compression script it's actually pretty cool you just let it go on a, a, a directory and it recursively crawls the directory and compresses every image saves the original image with a dot org tag or extension and compresses the image in place so that um, all the compression just happens and also the original image is saved in case there's some sort of problem with quality and you have to go back and um, you know some do some sort of hand compression on one image which might be necessary if you're doing some kind of HD um, photograph uh, so let's see is that uh, I believe that is the uh, that is the oh one other thing here too let's take a look at this view the other thing I would do on this site is let's see how many let's see do we have an image count yeah, we don't have an image count, but it looks like if I was just guessing, it looks like about 90 images for this site. So the other thing that I would say for this site is uh, go online and uh, look up um, a sprite library. A sprite means that you collect all these images together in a single image and then you access that single image through a uh, JavaScript library, very, very simple code, um, that accesses the chunk of each one of these images out of a single image. I mean, it sounds kind of complicated, but basically what it means is you serve a single image that concatenates together all these images. So what happens is uh, the first time you... Um, have an image reference then that image starts downloading and all the images download in one thread without any interruption so that means that all these other threads like downloading the JavaScript and the PHP and CSS those run in parallel along with the image that continually downloads um, also another thing I suspect that the JavaScript is set up incorrectly here let's take a look at uh, page speed here Yeah, so we've got all this. Um, well, no, it seems to. 
well, maybe page speed doesn't catch this. Anyway, what I'm looking at is uh, how these uh, items are loading here. So, for example, this uh, all the JavaScript should be deferred to the end of the page to load. Um, and so you should only see these uh, like jwplayer.js way down here at the bottom, uh, like this uh, SWF. So basically what that means is that you range for all the the uh, JavaScript to load last because if you l uh, look at this um, also I bet this JavaScript requires to be minified. Uh, minification means that you can uh, you can run a minifier on your CSS files and also your JavaScript files. Um, there are quite a few of these here that will um, dramatically um, uh, compress those files just on the fly or um, once so you don't have to do it on the fly and so that would be the uh, number six item on here is uh, ensure all um, JS and um, SWF are loaded at end of page and ensure this is number seven ensure the CSS and JS and I don't think you can minify SWF uh, there's no way to do that that the compression will take care of that so make sure the the uh, JSS and CSS are minified so I think that's um, I think that's a, a good uh, walkthrough here of this, uh, and I think that'll give uh, Jonathan plenty to do. Uh, the The big win, of course, is going to be to get rid of these red lines immediately, and also, you know, hire somebody competent that makes sure uh, all this is uh, done correctly every time.